so your interview with the Saints uh, for the head coaching job. Um, what were your initial impressions of New Orleans as a city when you land for the first time? I had no and interest. I wasn't here for Katrina. I, I was in Dallas. But forget Katrina. New Orleans was that place. I've only, I'd only been twice where it was great to visit, but it wasn't where you wanted to go move to and raise a family. I, I, it, it, at least it wasn't for me or for us. And Katrina happened, and it was right after that season. It's now January of 06. And I'd met Mickey briefly down in San Antonio on like a an overback. It wasn't even an interview. It was a chance to have dinner. Mickey Loomis. Mickey Loomis, Saints our general, general manager. manager. And then I was flying to uh, Green Bay for a formal interview, and that was the job. You know, I'm from Chicago. There's a tradition there. It's the Packers. Yeah, sure. it's the Packers. Yeah. Absolutely. And so I interviewed in Green Bay and then come back home and now was in New Orleans for this interview. And when I tell you, and it was post-Katrina, so it's January, Katrina was August, but you could count on one hand, you know, how many hotels and restaurants were open. And when I landed at the airport, I'll bet getting off the plane all the way to baggage claim, I saw two people. Uh, it was like a ghost town. And I think as, as, as a region, as a country, I think there was more concern as to just the recovery of the city than more than the team or the, you follow me? I think there were cons the questions surrounding this area post Katrina were with education, with uh, hospitals, with those were all unanswered problems. And so the idea of coming here and bringing a staff here, trying to bring a staff here, and make no mistake about it, it was a hard place to bring a staff before Katrina. It wasn't looked upon as a, you know, it was one of the, the five or six cellar dwellers. Because the Saints historically Period. were the laughing stock of the league. You remember well, the paper bags teams. over the head. It was just one of those teams yeah. that didn't have any tradition, um, and don't take that the wrong way, but, but it, it didn't. And they had made a lot of mistakes. And look, regionally, it wasn't appealing to a lot of people. It, you know, if now if you're from down here, I think it was appealing. But for look, there are a lot of guys that I couldn't hire because they just didn't want their kids going to school down here. Now I'm not. That's just the truth. And so now you put that, you know, three months removed from Katrina, and. So it was one of those interviews where, man, I, I really enjoyed my time with Mickey. And right away we began, you know, looking at the facilities. But have you ever been somewhere kind of checked out? That was me. I was looking at my cell phone. Like, <laughs> I love Mickey, but this is, wish him well with this thing. How quickly did that change? Well, it you? changed. Look, that evening I had gotten a message. Um, Ted Thompson from Green Bay, who had been their general manager and interviewed uh, me along with their staff, had left this voicemail that, man, they went in another direction. And they hired Mike McCarthy. And I remember being in the hotel, and I remember throwing my phone into the pillow. Like, you got to be kidding me. I'd not, I'd not interviewed for a job and never gotten it. You know, it was the first time where it was no. And, and now I'm sitting here at this place, and I'm like, so I just remember, I remember that feeling like, hey, now I'm kind of pissed thinking Mickey knew about this the whole time. You know, did he know? In other words, he's been so upbeat and I've been looking at him, ignoring him. Did he just know that, that they were going to offer this job to someone else? So. Do you think he did? I think he did. <laughs> you do? You ever asked him? <laughs> yeah. I think, he, I think he had an idea how the Green Bay thing was going to go. And, and I didn't. He said he thinks you already knew yeah. going into that meeting that he was going to get the yeah. Packers Listen, job. Listen, he's told that story a lot. I've never said a word about it, but <laughs> I kind of had an inkling, yes. Okay. But, he, you know, from, from that very first dinner meeting, I would say he was my preferred candidate. Describe the hotel you were supposed to live in when you first came to New Orleans. The first place we stay when we're getting together and we're bringing our staff, you go to hang your coats up in the closet and the door just kind of falls off and the, you know Gary said uh, one of our assistants Gary Gibbs sets a wake-up alarm for seven 
it doesn't go off, and the lady at the front desk says, well, that happens sometimes, you know. <laughs> and it kept, it, it, it had gotten to where everything that was challenged, or every challenge that we had and everything that went wrong, Katrina kept coming up as, as a reason. And I'm sure, I'm sure for a lot of those problems it was, and yet we just had this whole thing as a young staff that we were not going to be allowed to say the K word. We, we, we weren't, so look, if we were gonna get beat, it wasn't gonna be because of Katrina, but, but I didn't, you know, but we weren't gonna allow anyone in the football operations to explain why they couldn't get their job done and use Katrina. That first season when somebody, or maybe this happened on a few occasions, somebody would see you out in public and, you know, it's clearly somebody that didn't have a ton of money and they said they had just bought season tickets. Yeah, I, 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 you know, it was like we finally, each one would have a story and it was like, man, we just got our season tickets. And there was a story behind each one and, and you were just so, you know, every family has a budget. Right. Regardless if you are very extremely poor or extremely, there's a budget, you decide what you're gonna spend your money on. And I think there are um, a lot of people that will make this a priority over maybe some other things that you, you normally wouldn't expect. But that first season, it kind of no hit question. home with you. No question. Struck a note, yeah. Especially that recovery. I mean, there were so many. This kind of became that little three hour window where they could kind of go somewhere else. Like the same thing we do when we watch a movie or when we, you know, this became that window, I think, and, and it could, you know, forget a little bit about everything else that was going on. And I, I think there was a unique um, relationship there has been with this team. There aren't a lot of gated subdivisions that you can go live in, you know, so the players and the people with the club are much more you know, visible with and around the fan base than maybe in some larger cities where you may not um, be apt to run run into or bump into a player. I think that happens a lot more here. First game back at the Superdome after the team had been playing away for the year post Katrina, uh, that September game, uh, take me from waking up that morning to when you went to bed that night. Not only was it the return for a regular season game, it was the first time and 50% of our team and coaching staff, more than that, we're all new. It's the first time this whole cast of care, you know, it's the first time all of us were going to have a chance to pull into the stadium and play a home game. It was finished now. And so that was going to be emotional. So we decided to take the team there Friday or Thursday night and have a night practice and kind of go through the introduction, all the Monday night football, all the crowd noise. Like we try to simulate ahead of time what it's going to be like and look that was a that was an important practice for us he wanted us to see it feel it envision it you know and then at the end of practice he brought us all up and he just you know lights went down and and then up popped you know a video just just talking about hurricane katrina and what the you know revival of this dome meant for the for the city it was a symbol of of the you know the resurrection of the city and and then he looked at us all and he said, but guys, this night is only special if you win. <laughs> like you have to win this game for these people, you know? And so, it, but it wasn't pressure. It was just, man, it was a sense of responsibility. Like, how can we not win this game, you know? That's not pressure? Uh, no. It, we just, I, I, mean, I think we all, knew, we all knew how important it was. We all knew that we just, man, we were going to be laser focused and come out and just give it our best. And, um, you know, Steve Gleason blocks the, you know, opening punt of the game and it's like, man, there's no way we're, we're losing this game. I don't think I would trade the Super Bowl win for that game. Uh, that game was so important really? to our city, uh, so important to our city, our community, our state, the organization. Uh, I don't think I've ever been a part of something quite as meaningful and as symbolic as that game, um, at least in sports. How emotional was it for you? Oh, really emotional. I get, you know, a little choked up just thinking about it right now because, um, you know, I'd been here for a number of years prior to Katrina, been through Katrina, uh, saw how it impacted, you know, our citizens, our team, uh, uh, staff members on our team, 
that lost homes and and uh, boy that was just man we're back and and uh, ready to roll.